Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing the Murder on the Orient Express book tag. My cat has just leapt over there. It was quite, you know, it was a good jump. So yeah, this tag was created by the Hungry Bookworm. There are, I want to say, eight questions which I'm going to go and answer, and then I'll tag some people at the end. Uh, it could be tricky, so we'll see. Uh, let's get started. Dane reads. Question number one, Mrs. Hubbard, a multi-dimensional book. So I think you can interpret this however you want. For me, I guess I'm going to go for The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman. It's the second book in the His Dark Materials trilogy. And it's got them jumping between worlds and stuff. I mean, I guess if, if you don't count that, there's also um, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. That very much was multidimensional. Um, and both of them are multidimensional as well in the other sense of the word. So why not? Question number two, Colonel Arthbutnar, a book with love affair or mistress? I don't think what I've read recently. I was thinking there's a Graham Greene one um, that would fit this nicely, but I can't remember which one it was. It, it might have been, no, I can't remember what it was called. I'd remember it if I saw it. Um, but that was the first one that sprung into my head. That's a terrible answer though, because that's not an answer. So instead, a book with a love affair or mistress. I mean, I don't really pay attention to love affairs or mistresses. Having said that, I recently read uh, Across the River and Into the Trees by Ernest Hemingway, and that was very much about a love affair, even though it was a bit weird because the guy was older and he kept calling the girl daughter. And she liked it, but it was weird. Question number three, Mr. Ratchet, a book you love to hate. Um, I mean, I guess uh, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Um, Except, I don't really, I, you know, I don't love to hate any book. You go into books hoping that they'll be good. Um, but it is quite fun to shit on that book because it was very insta-lovey. The, the kid fell in love twice with different people. One of them he'd never met and the other one he'd only had one conversation with. And he was like, oh yeah, I'm in love with them. And it's like, oh. And then it's full of all this like pseudo-spiritual shit that was just... It wasn't a good book. My friend Neil hated it so much that he threw it out the window. I didn't quite do that. I just sold my copy, but it, it was not good. Question number four, Princess Dragomiroff. I'm butchering these pronunciations. Princess Dragomiroff, a book that has been moldering on your shelves for a while. I mean, I would hope that none of them are moldering. What's the one that I've had the longest? Uh, oh, I looked it up the other day and it's uh, The Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler which has been on my shelves for eight years um, and I still haven't read it. I probably should. I'll do it soon, I promise. <laughs> Question number five, Beddows, a book with a main character in service. You mean like in the secret service? Oh, in service is in like a butler or something, I guess, yeah? So, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Hey Google. What was the first Jeeves and Worcester book called? That's very quiet. Uh, okay, it was called Leave It to Jeeves. She's still going, but you can't hear it because it's on an incredibly quiet setting for some reason. Yeah, uh, Leave It to Jeeves by P.G. Woodhouse. Uh, the titular Jeeves is a butler. That's the only Jeeves and, and Worcester book that I've read though. Uh, question number six, The Train Itself. Another book that features this train specifically the Orient Express. Well, it would be Stamble... Hello, everybody. You're the Fuck me. It would be Stamble Train by Graham Greene. Um, I believe the Stamble Train was what the Orient Express either was originally called or was later called. Basically, that's where the Orient Express goes anyway, I think. Oh, I've run out of space on my camera. Okay, question number seven, Snowstorm, a book that features a snowstorm or characters stuck in a weather condition. This would be Snowbound by Bram Stoker, so Bram Stoker wrote Dracula, um, but I'm a fan of his work in general, and in Snowbound it's basically a wandering troupe of actors, troubadours, who, um, I don't know whether they're in a train, I think they might be in a train, but either way they get sort of snowed and stuck, and so um, they while away the time telling stories to each other. And question number eight, Yugoslavia. This does not exist anymore, but choose a non-fiction book about Yugoslavia or a novel set in a Slavic country. So, what were the Slavic countries? According to Wikipedia, Slavs are an ethno-linguistic group of people who speak the various Slavic languages of the larger Balto-Slavic linguistic group of the Indo-European languages. Okay, that doesn't help, but I... So, they said Balto-Slavo, which makes me think Baltic. 
and I, I'm just googling Slavic countries. I'm wondering if uh, Latvia counts. Okay, no. The 13 countries to consider to be official Slavic states include the Czech Republic, Bosnia, Serbia, Poland, Slovakia, Belarus, Russia, Ukraine, Bulgaria, Macedonia, Croatia, Slovenia, and Montenegro. So in that case, I'm gonna go for uh, Daria Grinkovicerte, and what was the book called? Snow on the Tundra. Um, and this is like the true memoirs of a, um, I think she was, I think she was Estonian. I don't know. I can't remember specifically where she was from. Um, but she was deported and her family were deported as well by the uh, Soviets to Siberia. And it's basically, it's a bit like an Auschwitz survival tale except in Siberia. Um, just really brutal stuff, man. Um, very like heartrending. It's hard to believe what went on. They were saying like the ground was too frozen for them to bury bodies and all this kind of stuff. And the manuscript itself, she buried it in her back garden because she was so scared of the Soviet authorities finding it. And it was only discovered after her death, way after the uh, collapse of the Soviet Union. It's one of those everyone should read. That, that to me is like is an important book as uh, Anne Frank's diary. So there we have it. That was my take on the Murder on the Orient Express book tag. I'm going to tag a few people. We'll do six. So I'm going to tag The Bookish Report, Reading and Whatnot, Jason's Weird Reads, Big Hard Books and Classics, Attention with an Exclamation Mark, and Joel Swagman as well. I did that in my usual way of going through and looking at my recent comments, in case you're wondering. So there we have it, that's my take on the murder on the Orient Express book tag. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of my answers. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.